Hi everyone, in this lecture I will be explaining you how red blood cells are synthesized in the bone marrow. In the previous lecture I was explaining you about what are the cells which are present in the bone marrow, what we call them and how they differentiate into the next series of cells. So let me summarize now, the bone marrow is consisted of stem cells. Stem cells are present in the bone marrow and these stem cells will differentiate into progenitor cells. There are two set of progenitor cells, one is the myeloid progenitor cell, the other one is the lymphoid progenitor cell. So this we call it as a common myeloid progenitor, CMP. From the common myeloid progenitor, all the cells are synthesized except the lymphocytes which is synthesized from the common lymphoid progenitor. So this common lymphoid progenitor will differentiate to form the lymphocytes. The rest of the blood cells are differentiated and synthesized from the common myeloid progenitor, myeloid. So this is a spelling for myeloid and this common myeloid progenitor will again differentiate into numerous colonies as I discussed in the previous lecture. Now we will move on to the particular colony which will give rise to the red blood cells. So common myeloid progenitor will differentiate to a colony. We call it as a colony forming unit, megakaryocyte erythroid. So from this colony forming unit, meg E, two more colonies are formed. So these cells in a colony, we call it as colony forming unit, meg, that is the megakaryocyte forming colony. And one more colony of cells, we call it as colony forming unit. E erythroid. So from this colony forming unit erythroid, the red blood cells are synthesized by different stages. So we will explain through what all different stages, how these cells will mature and finally to give rise to a mature red blood cell. The first precursor cell that is differentiated from the colony forming unit erythroid is Proerythroblast. So, this proerythroblast is also called pronormoblast, and this is the first precursor cell that is differentiated from the colony forming unit erythroids. So, this proerythroblast is of 14 to 20 micrometers in diameter, and let us see the structure of this proerythroblast. The cell is round in shape. The nucleus is large, see I am drawing the nucleus, nucleus is very large and it is covering almost the entire cell, nucleus blue colored, basophilic nucleus because of the acidic content and there are numerous nucleoli present in the nucleus, this one nucleoli. This is one more nucleoli. So there are numerous nucleoli present in the nucleus. And chromatin fibers are fine thread like structures within the nucleus. These are fine thread like structures, chromatin fibers within the nucleus. So the nucleus is very large and there are numerous nucleoli within the nucleus and the chromatin fibers are fine thread like structures. Now coming to the cytoplasm, the cytoplasm is very scanty and cytoplasm is taking the blue color basophilic the cytoplasm is basophilic and it is very less when compared to the nucleus. So this is the structure of proerythroblast and proerythroblast is the first precursor cell that is differentiated from the stem cells. Now this proerythroblast will have the property to divide. 
so it can give rise to more and more number of pro erythroblasts and also it can differentiate into next precursor cell in the rbc cell series so that is the early normoblast early normoblast that is differentiated from the pro erythroblast and this early normoblast is of 12 to 16 micrometers in diameter that means the cell is of smaller in size compared to the pro erythroblast and we'll see into the structure how it is the cell is round smaller than the pro erythroblast and nucleus is becoming smaller here the cytoplasm is increasing the nucleus is becoming smaller nucleus condensation is happening and within the nucleus the nucleoli are getting disappeared hardly few nucleoli are seen the chromatin is getting condensed the chromatin which was fine here it is getting condensed the chromatin is getting condensed it becomes coarse thick chromatin fibers chromatin condensation is happening and the cytoplasm is of more volume and this is deeply basophilic the cytoplasm is deeply basophilic the cytoplasm contains the ribosome and ribosomal rna the nucleic acid which is acidic structure which will take up the basic dye that is why the cytoplasm is basophilic and because of this the early normoblast is also called basophilic normoblast early normoblast are also called basophilic normoblasts and these early normoblasts can differentiate to next series we call them as intermediate normoblasts intermediate normoblasts are of 10 to 14 micrometers in diameter that means the cell size is still reducing compared to the previous one the cell size is decreasing and here in this intermediate normoblast the nucleus is further condensed and nucleus which was in the center is moved towards the periphery we call it as eccentric nucleus and the nucleus size is also small here there are no nucleoli it's in the nucleus and this nucleus is very deeply stained eccentric nucleus without any nucleoli a condensed chromatin within the nucleus and in the cytoplasm within the intermediate normoblast cell the hemoglobin starts appearing now the hemoglobin starts appearing so that here and there it will take up acidic dye the, because of the presence of hemoglobin and hemoglobin the heme content which is a basic nature will take up acidic dye and the ribosomal rna which are acidic structures will take up the basic dye so that means the cytoplasm is stained with both acidic and basic dye the cytoplasm is stained with both acidic and basic dye so this intermediate normoblast is also called polychromatic normoblast intermediate normoblast is also called polychromatic normoblast because the cytoplasm is taking both the dyes acidic dye and also the basic dye and in the intermediate normoblast the hemoglobin synthesis starts within this intermediate normoblast and this intermediate normoblast have the property of division also and finally it differentiate to form late normoblast late normoblast and this late normoblast is of a smaller size compared to the intermediate normoblast with 8 to 12 micrometers now we'll see the structure of late normoblast this cell is smaller compared to the intermediate so now here in this late normoblast the nucleus is very very small and very close to the cell membrane very small nucleus and very close and this is deeply stained very deeply stained and it is called ink drop nucleus it's like a small ink drop fallen over a paper the nucleus is deeply stained very small nucleus 
very close to the cell membrane it is almost like moving out of the cell almost about to go out of the cell in late normoblast the nucleus is very small no nucleoli and the chromatin is deeply condensed the cell is pycnotic deeply stained the cytoplasm is abundant the cytoplasm is abundant the hemoglobin synthesis is continued here because of the increased heme content the cytoplasm will take up the acidic dye and it appears pink or red in color so this is acidophilic because of more of heme heme is a basic structure and it will take up the acidic dye so the cytoplasm is acidophilic or it can also be called orthochromatic orthochromatic normoblast so this orthochromatic normoblast will don't have the property of cell division this will not have the property of cell division because the nucleus is not functioning here and this late normoblast only can differentiate to produce the next series by extrusion of the nucleus the nucleus is taken out by exocytosis the nucleus goes out and the remaining cell without any nucleus is the reticulocyte so this reticulocyte is formed from the late normoblast by extrusion of nucleus and the cell size is 7 to 9 micrometers the reticulocyte the cell size is 7 to 9 micrometer there is no nucleus only the cytoplasm within the cytoplasm the hemoglobin is present why it is called reticulocyte the cell is called reticulocyte because when the cell is stained with vital stains like chrysal blue the structures within the cytoplasm will take up the chrysal blue and appear like a meshwork so what are these structures that will take up this dye are the rna so that means the cytoplasm will have the rna the ribosomes are still present rna is present and this rna will take up the chrysal blue and also some remnants of the nucleus are remaining within the reticulocyte that will take up this chrysal blue and appear like a blue network reticular network that is why the cell is called reticulocyte and these reticulocytes they remain within the bone marrow for one to two days and before they transform into a mature rbc so how these reticulocytes are getting transformed into mature rbc the cytoplasmic content the organelle are removed from the cytoplasm what is the organelle content in the cytoplasm the mitochondria so mitochondria is expelled out and the ribosomes are expelled out from the cytoplasm so this reticular uh, meshwork is no more there in the mature red blood cell so this is a mature red blood cell and the cytoplasm is having only the hemoglobin so what is the difference between the mature red blood cell mature red blood cell and reticular site is the difference in the cell size so reticular site is around 7 to 9 microns this is slight it can be slightly lesser in size the volume is less reticular compared to reticulocyte mature red blood cell volume is less and there are no organelle mitochondria ribosome ribosome rna uh, nothing is present in uh, mature red blood cell so the mature red blood cells are transformed or differentiated from the reticulocytes so overall how many days is required to produce red blood cells in the bone marrow from the precursor cells it's around one week or seven days seven days is required for the formation of red blood cells so it takes around five days for the production of reticulocytes itself from the precursor cells so from the precursor cells the pro erythroblasts they differentiate into reticulocytes it takes five days and two more days are taken for the reticulocyte to get matured to form a final mature red blood cell so in summary what is happening during the differentiation finally forming the mature rbc the cell size is decreased the cell size goes on decreasing one 
Second, what is happening to the nucleus you can see here. The nucleus initially it was a larger nucleus with multiple nuclei. So, the nucleus cell is uh, nucleus size is getting reduced and finally, the nucleus is expelled out. What is happening to the cytoplasm? The cytoplasm was very less here. The cytoplasm is getting increased and increased and increased and within the cytoplasm, the initially it was a basophilic cytoplasm with only the RNA material. It becomes polychromatic cytoplasm with the hemoglobin and the RNA and finally, it becomes orthochromatic cytoplasm with only the hemoglobin. The cytoplasm is getting increased through the series. So, this is all about how red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow and these are the different stages of formation of red blood cells. To summarize, what are the different stages of formation of red blood cells? The first precursor that is formed is the proerythroblast. It is also called pronormoblast. So, from the proerythroblast, early normoblasts are differentiated. Early normoblasts will give rise to intermediate normoblast cells and these will differentiate into late normoblasts. Late normoblasts will differentiate into reticulocytes and from the reticulocytes, the mature red blood cells are formed. So, at what stage the hemoglobin starts appearing? It starts appearing in the intermediate stage, which is also called polychromatic normoblast stage. So, here the hemoglobin starts appearing. The hemoglobin synthesis continues up to the reticulocyte and hemoglobin synthesis will not be there in the mature red blood cells. Now, up to what stage the cells can divide and divide? This pro-erythroblast pro cells, they can differentiate into the next series and also they can make up its colony by cell division. So, here in early normoblasts also, they can also divide and divide into more and more number of early normoblasts. Even the intermediate normoblast cells also can divide. They can undergo mitotic division to give rise to more and more intermediate normoblasts. But from here, late normoblasts onwards, there is no further cell division happening. In the next lecture, let us understand what are the different factors that will increase the red blood cell production from the bone marrow and what are the different factors that will suppress the red blood cell production from the bone marrow. What are the factors increasing the RBC production? What are the factors decreasing the RBC production? Or also we can call it as regulation of erythropoiesis. Next lecture.